But what, it's not coming back. Will you please, please, please train me for a 21st century job mm -hmm. so I can feed my family, mm -hmm. support my family? And you know where those jobs happen? Is in the community colleges. Community colleges are the instrument of workforce development. And so it hurts me when I see the state underfund community colleges. When I see community colleges like Mount Hood have to raise their tuition rate, we just raised our tuition rate $8 an hour, mm -hmm. $8 a credit hour. I voted for it because there was no alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe that community colleges in particular are the instruments of workforce development. Mm -hmm. And Mount Hood has a wonderful working relationship with the various uh, craft unions. Um, so we help produce welders and um, you know people that uh, cons various kind of construction people uh, that can build things. We work with Boeing, who has a facility out in East Portland, mm -hmm. and help train people according to their specifications. Okay, what do you need, yeah, Boeing? Right, right, right. We'll train Makes them for sense. you. That's nice. uh, and we do that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And community colleges are best able to do that. Yes. They're really more flexible that way than than Portland State or University of Oregon or Oregon State or whatever. You know, you make a good point because I, I remember the day of D. Bernardis. Remember D. Bernardis? Oh, yeah. When he came to town, so to speak. Yep, yep. And before D. Bernardis, you know, Voc Ed was in the schools. Mm-hmm. Right? During mm -hmm. those formative years. That was a commitment, right? Policy. Benson and Tech. That's right. And then when D got in, in all due respect, he put the community college piece just being real quick like. Yeah. But there was no that was that wasn't the opportunity to transition those kids right. into that deal. I think at that point in time, I'm just throwing out something, hopefully you guys are having the discussion, yeah. you probably are. Oh, yeah. That I think during the formative years, we I think we're at a point in time now that when a kid graduates, a young person graduates from school, yeah. they should have that two year college degree with them. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand yeah. Jefferson's got some, some model or whatever, that's, but I think that should be throughout the entire state. You having that kind of discussion? Part of the governor's plan. Is that right? The go one of the governor's bills was the 40-40-20. Okay. Okay, 40-40-20 says that by the year 2025, that 40% of our workforce will have a four-year degree. Another 40% will have at least a two-year degree, um, um, some kind of special training beyond high school. And that the other twenty percent will have a high school equivalent. Okay. okay. So that. But what that's about the bottom line right now? I mean, we got some. Well, we got some major he, issues right I, now. I know it's twenty twenty five, and that yeah, seems that, like a long, long yes. uh, twelve years, thirteen years from now, but it'll come faster than but you think. Okay. You know. Okay. And okay. again, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Having right. having a goal like that and working toward it, um, I think was a good thing. I supported okay. that. Okay. I wish it could happen sooner. Mm -hmm. I wish we had unlimited resources for education. Mm -hmm. That's where I'd spend it. Okay. Okay. Um, I think you know that's money you spend on education, uh, unless it's unless it's, there's a tremendous inefficiency, is never wasted. It always gets us ahead, mm -hmm. uh, and I think we ought to give high priority. Okay. to education starting by the time they pop out of the womb. Yes, yes, yes. Well, look, uh, we got about another, I'd say about another 10 minutes or so, and I'm just going to kind of throw some little quickie things because I, I want to oh. use your wisdom. as okay. uh, You know, this is the largest city in the state of Oregon here in the city mm -hmm. of Portland, if you will. And uh, now it's been said that uh, uh, Mayor Adams is not going to be running for re-election, yeah. okay? And we got that, and then, and then we got another one. Uh, we, got, we got another Southeast Portland commissioner. Uh, Randy, Randy Leonard, Leonard is not going to yeah. be a part of yeah, the deal. Good friend of mine. And then there's a possibility that um, I think one of the commissioners who's got in, and she's going she's, yeah. she's to have Amanda. Amanda's Amanda going to have. Amanda has a tough race. She's going to have a tough race because someone, a seasoned politician, is going to be in yeah. that peace aspect Mary, of it. Mary called me up, so, wanted me to endorse her. You see what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> I know Mary, and she's solid as a rock. Oh, she is. She's solid as a rock. And uh, so, what, what do you think? Any 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 thoughts about? Uh, well, I think contested elections are good. Good. Okay. Um, I wish that there were limitations on how much could be spent on elections. I think uh, the U.S. Supreme Court made a serious error mm -hmm. when in a split five to four vote they said basically that any business or any wealthy individual or group can raise as much money as they want and give it to any political uh, candidate that they want to because that's an exercise in free speech. I would like to see limitations on how much can be spent. Um, and how much of a person's own private money that they can spend. Just because a person happens to be a multi-billionaire doesn't mean that they should have a leg up to getting elected public office. It ought to be on quality. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that those things concern me, but I I'm not too troubled by what's happening in Portland right now. Okay. Uh, I know Mary Nolan. I know Amanda Fritz. Uh, they're both fine yeah. women, yeah. fine public servants, yeah. and the fact that the two of them are going to be are running against each other doesn't trouble me. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have two quality candidates right. running for an office than two losers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and those are both quality candidates. Mm -hmm. Uh, Randy Leonard uh, has, you know, Steve Novick I know is going to run in that race. I don't know if he'll have the others as well. Uh, Steve Novick has run statewide, so he's yeah. pretty well known, pretty yeah. bright guy. Yeah. Uh, and, and, the mayor, and the mayor, in the yeah, mayor the race, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, you got Charlie Hales uh, did a really good job, yes, but, but he uh, may have made some mistakes in terms yeah. of his residency. Yeah, well, that he may, did that with Dudley. Remember, may did, come yeah, yeah, that may yeah, come yeah, back yeah, and bite him. Yeah. Uh, I like Charlie. But if he's a good candidate, yeah, but if he's a good person. I'm not saying yeah, I wouldn't yeah, vote yeah. for him oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, of that. Oh, yeah. uh, but, you know, Brady, uh, Eileen Brady's a quality candidate, I think. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. There may be some others jump into that race. It'll be interesting to see. Um, uh, Portland, frankly, for the last three years, two and a half years under Sam Adams, has been under a cloud mm -hmm. because of what he did and what he lied about yeah. to get elected. Mm -hmm. and that's unfortunate. I think he is a very bright man and has good leadership capabilities, but it has hurt Portland when it comes to lobbying in the legislature that he is under a cloud and the city has been kind of under a cloud. Mm -hmm. I tried to, I introduced legislation at the request of Sam Adams in the city of Portland on some land use issues and I didn't get the first base in mm -hmm. Salem mm -hmm. just because uh, Portland didn't have credibility. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm looking forward to working with a new mayor. I hope we get somebody that's really strong, uh, somebody that can, uh, you know, help me in Salem um, and help to represent the people of this area um, and, and put Portland back on the map in terms of being the number one city in Portland mm -hmm. or in the state of Oregon. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the other thing, too, is that uh, some of the minorities are kind of concerned, you know, from the standpoint, we've not had that many minorities, if you will, one city council. Yeah. Uh, was the county, we've got, uh, we've got the young lady who was formerly with Ron Wyden's office. Uh, right. Uh, well, gee whiz, I'm sorry, I shouldn't, I shouldn't know her. I know her just where I can see her, but I'm getting at that point yeah, in my life. county commissioner. County commissioner. Yeah, and then uh, Colin Moore uh, was just appointed to the Commission on Black Affairs, which I serve on. I'm the Senate representative. She would have been a neat uh, candidate a bright, to run for, yeah, run for city council. Very, she's a very have. bright lady. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe somebody can maybe, convince her. Maybe she may get, get a convention, time. right? She worked for Fish at one point in time, remember yeah, that? And did. I would have thought that Fish might have gotten her to possibly yeah, run yeah, for city council. Why not? She's obviously a very bright lady. Oh, you yes. Know? A friend of mine, Roy J., has been yeah, prominent. Roy's thinking about, oh, Roy's prominent. thinking about running? Well, his problem is he doesn't live in the city of Portland. You don't live in the city of Portland. He, he lives <laughs> up in Happy Valley. Oh, Happy Valley. Yeah. You know, okay. I, okay. I told him, I said, you, why didn't you find out where your new house yeah, was? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make sure it's in the city of Portland before you move out there in <laughs> Happy Valley because he's yeah. a man of immense ability and and uh, stat stature in more right, ways right, than one. Right, 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 right. Uh, good friend, right, right. good, good okay, guy. Okay, good. Well, that gives us a good overview on that. We got a few more minutes now. What do you think is going to happen here on that? Let's go back to national. Let's All go right. national again. That's what's going to happen. What's going to happen, Ron? What, what's your prediction? Because we're talking now. They they they're compromising. They put trying to put deals together. What do you think is going to happen? Well, the, the problem. I, I think the Senate will pass. The like Senate. The now we're talking about national folks. We're talking yeah, about the, uh, the U.S. Senate. I think the U.S. Senate will pass the compromise proposal. But what compromise, about the House? But the House, <laughs> the problem with the House is that you've got the Tea Party Republicans yeah. that, aren't, that don't like it and aren't mm -hmm. going to support it, and you've got some very liberal uh, Democrats that also don't like it, mm -hmm. which means it's probably okay. But, <laughs> I, you know, it, both extremes, and that's really the difficulty you have in, in politics today is the polarization, the moving apart, and the shrinking of the middle, the shrinking of the moderates, the shrinking of pragmatic moderates that are willing to compromise. Compromise is not a dirty word. They've got to get it done. I sure hope they get it done. They've got to get it done. It would be absolutely tragic if um, we don't have a debt ceiling bill through But a lot of them don't believe. Days. A lot of folks in the country don't believe that well, that's going to happen. They're going to find out if it if in, in fact, if in fact, they don't get the debt ceiling raised, they're going to see interest rates climbing. They're going to see the stock market collapsing, 
and the value of their 401ks shrinking, um, it's going to hurt everybody. Um, and that would be tragic. So I have to believe that there's enough responsible pragmatists, Republicans and Democrats, that they somehow will get it done. Mm -hmm. I sure hope so. Mm -hmm. The other point is that when they, when they talk about the whole issue of uh, tax increases, really, but I thought the focus was the fact that some folks are not paying their fair share, the rich and the yeah. oil companies and yeah. whatever. Why is that such a problem that they can't yeah. realize this? Well, yeah, you know. Why is that such a problem? Those special tax breaks for PGE, mm -hmm. for the big oil companies and so on, you have to understand those huge multinational corporations contribute an awful lot of money to an awful lot of candidates. And those candidates then don't want to take those tax breaks away from them. You see, you don't have to raise tax rates mm -hmm. to raise revenue. Yeah. All you got to do is close, close some of those loopholes, mm -hmm. you know, reduce the number of tax breaks that go to big oil, uh, that go to other major wealthy corporations. Uh, without, you could even lower tax rates. Mm -hmm. Uh, what are we and, doing in Oregon? You, you mentioned PGE. You know, what, in, in Oregon, what, 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 we, we're what, working on this. Okay. We had a special committee for the first time that only dealt with, with tax credits okay. and has significantly reduced many tax credits. But the most important thing they did was they sunsetted every tax credit, mm -hmm. staggered on a six-year cycle. Okay. So, you, you know, uh, this tax credit lasts six <coughs> years. This tax credit lasts six years starting here, out to here, okay. and so on. Uh, all those tax credits now, uh, thanks to my good friend, Senator Jenny Burdick and others. You're local. Uh, you bet. She's a Portland gal, mm -hmm. good friend. Um, she's chair of the Revenue Committee okay. and helped work through this and served on that special tax credit committee. So we're trying to get a handle on those extra tax credits. Okay. We look like we got about a minute. Anything else you want to say to the viewing public here about uh, what's to be expected in the, in the next legislature or any, anything that you might be coming out that we may not know about? Well, I would hope that people will continue to pay attention to what's going on, that they will contact me or their state senator or state representative, and you saw on the, on the screen there my email address okay. or my telephone numbers in the phone book. You can call me or email me. Uh, we respond to all of those. Um, my, my wife is very helpful. She's pretty fluent on the computer and we try to keep up with all of that. Um, and so just keep involved, keep active, ask questions, attend community meetings, Good. attend legislative forums, uh, and don't forget to vote. All right. That's, that's the most important. That's right. Rod, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. You bet. Again, yeah. my guest, Senator Rod Monroe. Have a good one. See you next week.